Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Nightmare on Elm Street series with Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Now, Freddy's Dead came out in 1991, and this is the sixth film in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Now, I already reviewed this movie along with all the other Nightmare on Elm Street films all the way back in 2011 for Season 1 of Horror Month. Those reviews are still up, however, they're no longer public, but you can still see them on the Horror Month Season 1 playlist, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. I also discussed this movie at length in a 2018 retrospective on the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise I recorded with some friends of mine, which I'll also leave a link to in the description below. However, I will also include some audio from that retrospective later on in this video. And I recently re-reviewed the first five films in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, which you could check out on the playlist for Horror Month Season 12. Now, you might be wondering, why the hell am I wearing these three? 3D glasses right now? Well, that's because this movie was actually released in 3D when it came out back in 1991, and the DVD I have here actually has the option to watch the movie in 3D, and the 3D glasses I have here came on the Nightmare on Elm Street box set. Now, it actually came with two 3D glasses. Unfortunately, I lost the other pair a long time ago. Now, Freddy's Dead was written by Michael DeLuca, who at the time was actually president of New Line Cinema. He also wrote several episodes of Freddy's Nightmares, which was the Nightmare on Elm Street TV series that most fans consider to be non-canon, and it was really more of an anthology series where Freddy was the Crypt Keeper-like host. He also wrote the 1995 Judge Dredd movie, the Sylvester Stallone one, and he also wrote John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Man. Madness. Now, what the film was directed by Rachel Talalay, who prior to this, I believe, worked on all the other Nightmare on Elm Street movies leading up to this, either in the effects department or as a producer. She's also produced several movies for John Waters. She also directed movies like Ghost in the Machine and Tank Girl, and she's done a lot of work for television. She's directed episodes of Doctor Who, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Riverdale, Iron Fist... Now, Freddy's Dead has a reputation for being the worst in the franchise, and I'm not gonna front, it is. This is a bad movie. This is a really, really bad movie. But I still kind of like it. Like, I like it, but I also can't defend it. Like, I'll defend Nightmare 2 and Nightmare 5, which are also maligned by fans. Like, I actually think both of those are way better than fans give them credit for. But this one, yeah, there really is no defense of this one. This is easily, like, objectively speaking, the worst film in the franchise. Yet at the same time... I still enjoy it on a certain level. I think the only reason I even remotely like this one is because I saw it at a very young age, and I do have some nostalgia for it. Luckily, I saw the other films before I saw this one. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have been able to take the other films as seriously. But my only real defense of this one is it's a comedy. It's a pure horror comedy. It's almost more of a parody of the first five movies than anything else. And the movie is so far removed from Wes Craven's original. The original Nightmare on Elm Street I still think is a genuinely pretty creepy horror film. Whereas this, again, it's practically a parody, and it's not even a good parody, and Freddy Krueger in this movie is almost a completely different character than he was in the original. Now, A Nightmare on Elm Street 5 was met with a very lukewarm reception from fans. It was not a flop, but it was not the hit that New Line was hoping for. So New Line Cinema, the company that produced all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, decided to lay the franchise that has made them a mini-major to rest. This was intended to be the final film in the franchise. Of course, history has proven it wasn't, but it really does show you where the producers' heads were at, that they thought this would be a good conclusion to the series. Like, this is what they decided to go out on. And it's an even bigger shame that they originally had a much better idea for this movie. Originally, Peter Jackson, who at this point had directed Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles, this was still a few years before he would do Braindead, aka 
aka Dead Alive, he actually wrote a script called A Nightmare on Elm Street 6, The Dream Lover, and it still would have been a horror comedy, but it would have been a very unique and different take on the Nightmare on Elm Street mythos. I think the premise was going to be everybody in Springwood, or at least all the teenagers in Springwood, know about Freddy, but they no longer find him to be scary, so Freddy has no more power in the dream world. So, in the dream world, he's just this sad, pathetic, decrepit old man, and kids actually purposefully put themselves to sleep to go into the dream world and kick the shit out of him. But I think one of these kids was going to accidentally get killed, and that would have created enough fear of Freddy to give him back his powers, and it was going to involve a cop who gets trapped in the dream world and his son has to save him, it sounded like it would have been a really cool take on this franchise. And I would have loved to have seen a Nightmare on Elm Street movie done by Peter Jackson in the style of something like Bad Taste or Dead Alive. Now, even though Jackson's script never got made, it did lead to Peter Jackson having an association with New Line Cinema, which ultimately led to the Lord of the Rings movies, which Bob Shea actually produced. But even when they scrapped Peter Jackson's script, there were ideas to bring back Alice from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5, and her son Jacob. Jacob, I think, was originally going to be the main character of this movie. Like, there are so many better ideas they could have went with for the final Nightmare on Elm Street movie, which is why I'm kind of glad this didn't end up being the last one, but the fact that they tried to make this the culmination of the series is actually kind of insulting. And again, I don't hate this movie as much as everybody else does. I still like it, but I also can't defend it. So the plot of Freddy's Dead is it's supposed to be set 10 years in the future, which I don't really buy. I mean, granted, back in 1991, they probably had no idea what styles and fashions would be like in 2001, but I don't actually buy that this one's set in the future. But regardless, in the time between this movie and A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, Freddy somehow gained enough power to essentially kill all the children and teenagers in spring. Springwood and trap the town in sort of a supernatural limbo where the line between dreams and reality is completely blurred, and all the adults in the town are suffering from mass psychosis. But in the movie, we follow this boy who's maybe 17 or 18 years old, who's the only surviving teenager of whatever Freddy did, and Freddy allows him to escape, but he now no longer has any memory of who he is or what exactly happened in Springwood, but he ends up at this shelter for troubled kids. And there he meets this psychiatrist named Maggie, who is also having strange dreams... So she decides to take this kid, who's simply called John Doe in the movie, back to Springwood to see if it can't jog his memory. But it turns out that three kids from the shelter stowed away in the van with them, so they end up coming to Springwood with them, and basically they all end up trapped in the town, and eventually they find out who Freddy is, and they find out that when Freddy was human, he had a child, and that ends up becoming the main conflict of the story, is who was Freddy's child. Now, in the film, Robert Englund reprises the role of Freddy Krueger, and he's good in the movie. The problem is the writing for Freddy in this movie. Freddy is an absolute joke in this film. I mean, there's literally a scene in the movie where he's playing with a power glove. Like, his glove becomes a power glove, and he's playing with one of his victims like it's a video game. There's also a scene where he's spoofing the Wizard of Oz, where he's on a broomstick and has a witch's hat. There's even a scene in the movie where a character has fallen in his dream and Freddy pushes a bed of spikes and then looks to the camera all frustrated and tired like it's a freaking Roadrunner cartoon. And to some degree, I did find some of that to be amusing. Again, the film is a comedy. And what's frustrating about this movie is I actually do think the basic story is pretty good. And I liked how this movie really did expand upon the backstory for Freddy that was first introduced in Dream Warriors and then expanded upon a little bit more in Dream Child. There's really no reference in this movie to Amanda Krueger, but in the movie you find out that when Freddy was a child, he was adopted by an abusive stepfather and he was made fun of in school and it gives you some insight into why he became a serial killer as an adult. 
In the movie, you also find out that after Freddy was killed by the parents of the children he murdered, he was freed from hell by these ancient entities known as the Dream Demons, who essentially gave him his powers. And I actually really liked the concept of the Dream Demons. Granted, the effects they use for them in the movie, because they use early CGI effects and they look absolutely awful, but I thought the premise was interesting. I mean, I liked the concept Except that these things were sort of working behind the scenes throughout the entire franchise, and all this time Freddy was essentially a puppet for them. I thought that was kind of a cool premise. Unfortunately, the concept is not explored or executed well at all. You also have Lisa Zane as Maggie, who ends up being the main character of the film, and spoiler, it turns out that she was adopted when she was a child, and her real name is Catherine, and she turns out to be Freddy Krueger's daughter. Again, that's an interesting revelation in the film, and I, I have nothing against Lisa Zane in the movie, but to be honest, Maggie is kind of an uninteresting character. And they vaguely hint at the end that perhaps Maggie might have some of the same murderous rage as her father, but they don't explore it at all. You also have Sean Greenblatt, if I'm saying his name right, as the John Doe character, who's a fairly interesting character. Now, from what I understand, this character was originally going to be Jacob from A Nightmare on Elm Street 5 which would have been really interesting, and I honestly wish there was more of a connection between this and Part 5. Of course, if the character did end up being Jacob, this would have to be set even farther in the future, because Jacob was only just born at the end of Part 5, and here he's a 17 or 18-year-old young man, and again, this is only set like 10 years in the future, so realistically, Jacob would still be a little kid at this point. Then again, Again, because Freddy has set the town in sort of a supernatural limbo where dreams and reality are sort of mixed together, maybe you could say that time is working differently in Springwood. But again, the character is not actually Jacob, but it would have been interesting if it actually was. You also have Ricky Dean Logan as Carlos, Leslie Dean as Tracy, and Breckenmeyer as the character of Spencer. This was before Breckenmeyer would really become famous. Now, I want to point out the character of Tracy. In the movie, we find out that she was molested by her father when she was a child, which of course is some very, very dark subject matter. And I'm all for a horror movie touching on real-world issues like that. The only problem with this movie, though, is... The tone of the movie is so goofy, and you have all this silly shit happening, and all of a sudden it gets, like, ultra dark in that one scene where Freddy's taking on the form of her father, and it's like, again, if it was in a better Nightmare on Elm Street movie, I would be fine with that scene, but it's like you're doing that in a movie where Freddy is parodying The Wizard of Oz. You also have Yafet Kodo as a psychiatrist at the shelter. I mean, come on, you have Yafet Kodo in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And he does kind of save some of the movie, in my opinion. And come on, the movie's worth it just to have a scene where Yafet Kodo beats the shit out of Freddy with a baseball bat. Legitimately, that happens in the movie, and it's great. And honestly, his character, Doc, is the best character in the whole movie. The movie is also noted for its celebrity cameos. You had a cameo from Alice Cooper playing Freddy's stepfather in a flashback. You also had a rather bizarre cameo from Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold, who show up in one scene in the movie. And you had Johnny Depp make a brief cameo in the film on the TV in a dream sequence in sort of a parody of those anti-drug PSAs. And if you wanted to, you could assume that Johnny Depp is playing Glenn on the TV there because these movies do establish that Freddy takes the souls of his victims. The only issue with that is Alice freed the souls of Freddy's victims, or at least all the people he killed up until that point at the end of part four, so it's like, how come Glenn's soul wasn't freed as well? Would heaven not take Glenn? And Glenn said, 
Freddy, can you take me back? And I'm probably thinking about this way more than was actually intended. I think the cameo was just meant to be a fun little tribute to the first movie. And you had Robert Shea, who is the producer of all these movies, playing an avatar of Freddy in one of John Doe's dream sequences towards the beginning of the film. Now, I know I've been really crappy on this movie. Again, I actually do like this movie, but I like it as a guilty pleasure. Objectively speaking, this is not a very good movie at all. Now, if I were to bring up another positive about the movie, I actually do like some of the music in the film, and I just love the early 90s aesthetic of the film. Like, you could totally tell this was the early 90s. For some people, that would be a negative, but I actually enjoyed that about the movie. Now, despite how poorly received this movie was when it came out, it actually did do well financially, but to this day, it's considered by most fans to be the worst one, and even most of the cast and crew of the movie hate it. Like, I remember asking Robert Englund when I met him what his opinion of this one was, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but I don't think he was a fan. In fact, the last disc on the Nightmare on Elm Street box set has a bunch of extra material, like little short documentaries or retrospectives on each movie, and when it gets to the one on part six on Freddy's Dead, the whole thing is basically Rachel Talley and Robert Shea apologizing for the freaking movie. This really is almost the Batman and Robin of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Now, while this was intended to be the final film of the franchise, there were two more after this. Technically three more if you want to count the remake, but a few years after this you had Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which was more of a standalone film. It was set outside of the main continuity of the series. And then you had Freddy vs. Jason in 2003, which was also a crossover with the Friday the 13th series. And that one acted as more or less a direct sequel to this this one, as well as a direct sequel to Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. And it was Freddy vs. Jason that ended up being the final film of the original series, but you did have the Nightmare on Elm Street remake in 2010. Now, around the same time that this movie came out, they did a Nightmare on Elm Street comic book series, I believe was set between the events of Part 5 and this one, and there was also a comic book adaptation of this movie, as well as a direct sequel to this movie in comic book form called A Nightmare on Elm Street The Beginning, which I don't believe that series was ever finished. And Maggie from this movie, as well as the Dream Demons, did show up in the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comics, which acted as a direct sequel to the movie Freddy vs. Jason, as well as a sequel to the Evil Dead movies. But that also depends on if you want to count those comics as canon. And I do like those comics, but I'm not really sure if I actually count them as being officially connected, like officially in continuity with the movies. Now I want to cut to the segment of the 2018 retrospective on the Nightmare franchise I recorded with my friends where we talked about this movie. Keep in mind some of the same points that I just brought up I'll also be bringing up in that video. Freddy's Dead The Final Nightmare. I'm gonna say right off the bat, I like this movie. I shouldn't like it, but I do. But I totally understand why people don't like this movie. It is a bad movie. Objectively speaking, it is bad. I have a lot of nostalgia for it, though. And as corny as the jokes are, I actually kind of laugh at it. I look at it as a comedy. It's a comedy. It's a parody of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But as a real Nightmare on Elm Street movie, it's bad. But I personally enjoy it. But what do you guys think of Freddy's well, Dead? I just don't, how do you run out of ideas about making films about dreams? That you can do anything you want. Like how do you like you know what I mean? That just shows how sort of um, you know the, the the sort of the the bottom they were scraping the bottom of the barrel for this movie when you could have done so many different things. It's wide open, and you make a parody. Like I, that's I just so that I have no time for this movie. To be honest, yeah, I'm glad you enjoy this movie because for the most part, I don't. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, so you're trying to tell me that when Freddy smacks Johnny Depp in the face with the pan, that's not one of the most disturbing scenes in the entire franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a frying pan and some eggs to me. Which is too bad because they did bring back 
like Johnny Depp. Yeah, they could have done was, some really interesting. That's yeah. that's what that's what so frustrates me about yeah. the movie. This potential there. Yeah. It could have been something. You could have done, done anything. You're, you yeah, could, yeah. It's wide open, and, yeah. you don't, and this is I what just, you come up with. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say something about Johnny Depp's cameo. I think it is great that he was humble enough to come back for this. Yeah. You know. You know, but this is what he comes back to. You know what I mean? You get yeah. Johnny Depp to come back, and that's what you... You know yeah. what I mean? So it's- One thing that's interesting is Rachel Tellay, or however she says her name, said that she wanted to make this almost like a Twin Peaks-inspired Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I don't know if that worked too well. No, well, I mean, that would have been awesome if she had done it, but character. certainly didn't do it. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that, because, uh, you know... During the creepy town fair, one of the characters does kind of. We're say, in Twin Peaks. Yeah, he yeah. Says that's that actually how I Peaks. first found out about the show Twin Peaks was yeah. from that line. Actually, yeah, interesting. And you know, I mean, again, it's creative, mm-hmm. but yeah. ultimately, it, I mean, the humor is just out of control in this yeah. one. Hey, you forgot the power glove! I mean, he makes Spencer jump up and down. You hear the boing, boing, yeah. boing. I want to point out sound. Spencer in the movie. Am I the only one who thought his father looked like Donald Trump? <laughs> That's a good point. A little bit. Yeah. I, I feel like that that was definitely meant, his father was definitely meant to be like a Donald Trump parody mm-hmm. or something. I do want to point out, there is sort of a theme in the movie about about bad parents, because like, okay, you have Spencer's father, who is an asshole to him. Carlos's mother basically caused him to go deaf, but then you have Tracy's mother, I mean father, who molested her. Mm-hmm. And then you have the character of Maggie, who you find out is actually Freddy's daughter. So I almost feel like there is a theme in the film of bad parents, but I don't know if that theme really comes through that which, well. Which would have been great, because that would have been almost a return to the first movie, the themes of the first movie about the inability of parents yeah. to protect or to, to be the, the role models that yeah. they should be. And I want to point out the character of Tracy in the film. She is a very sympathetic character because you, because you find out that she was molested by her father. The issue with that is... That could have been a really horrifying scene, Freddie taking on the form of her father who molested her. The issue is, you have a scene like that in a movie where you also have Freddie playing with a power glove. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they're trying to introduce serious themes in a movie that is not serious, you know? Yeah. I mean, mean, freaking parody in The Wizard of Oz, I'll get you, my pretty, and your little soul, too! That... Where he's riding on that broomstick and says that line, that to me is one of the absolute lowest points of the <laughs> yeah. series. And it's a shame that the only Nightmare on Elm Street movie that was directed by a woman turned out like this. Well, yeah. you thought you think that with 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 a, a a woman director, there would be a new, fresh take on it, or something different about it, you know, or some new uh, themes, you know, about gender or about. And there isn't any, you know what I mean? Yeah. If anything, it's just it's just a, it's a it's it's so stereotypical and cliched and so shallow the film, you know. And it's a shame, you know. Not yeah. to mention unbearably over the top. I mean, once again, for me personally, it works as a comedy. It's not a good movie by any means. Yeah, I remember. I don't know if either of you have have ever heard of. Uh, James Rolfe, he's yeah, a yeah, video game yeah. nerd. He does a lot of horror reviews, and I remember in his review for this one, he said that when Freddy is, you know, pushing that bed of spikes, you know, to impale John Doe on, he looks, it's like he's the Roadrunner, mm-hmm. and I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that would have been, and, and see, that would have been even, if they'd been more, they, they should, see, that, that's kind of like middle of the road. That's the problem with the movie. Either they should have done darker and went, went more darker, yeah. or you know something? Went, made like a Tex Avery cartoon where everything in the film is over the top, cart- you know what I mean? Like, but it's just this middle of the road kind of like, well, we're going to do, again, trying to appeal to as many demographics as possible. And it's like art by committee, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to merchandise this and we have to have this test audience. And it just, it just, it never works. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I gotta say also, I mean, Carlos's death, and I mean, I'll admit that that where his head explodes, that is a pretty spectacular death scene, but it's also... Nice just, hearing from you, Carlos! Yeah, like that, it's just played too much up for laughs, mm-hmm. and I mean, even before it happens, you know, Freddy's like dancing around in the background trying to make as much noise, it's silly, and then... Yeah, this is the point, Freddy's not scary in this one at all. Not. Now, I do want to point out, though, that in this one, they... They sort of expand more on Freddy's backstory that was introduced in part three and part five, but... I don't know. I feel like giving Freddy Krueger a daughter, kind of like... I mean, I I didn't mind the character, but it's like, I don't know, that kind of throws things off continuity-wise, yeah. I think. And also, they sort of implied that that house that Nancy lived in in the first movie was Freddy's house. Yeah, I never liked that either. It's like, okay, why the fuck would Donald and Marge, Marge Thompson move into that house? Why the fuck would they move into the yeah. same house... 
of the person they killed. That makes no sense yeah, to me. They really dropped the ball with that one. Another retcon that this does to the whole series that kind of annoys me is they establish that Springwood is in Ohio. If you watch the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie, it's clear Springwood is in California. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, that's a retcon that has always bugged me. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, this one definitely screws around with the continuity way too much. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, it's really mind-boggling. Um, it's like, you know, stick to the freaking set continuity. Don't start making things so confusing. Yeah. That house in the first one was the Thompson house. Mm -hmm. It wasn't originally the Kruger house. Why do you have to complicate everything? <laughs> yeah, and another thing is, like, Freddy's death in the movie. Okay, this is meant to be the final film, and it's like... How come bringing him out of the dream world, making him human again, and killing him works this time, but it didn't work in the first movie? Yeah. A better final death would have been his death in part three or part four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, the, It's like, really? That's his final death? He explodes, and then his face comes in and out of itself a yeah. bunch of times. Not to mention those dream demons were so stupid looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They looked like, you know... They look like flying sperm with faces. Mm -hmm. I do want to point out, though, that the Dream Demons concept I actually thought was kind of interesting. So, like, they we were kind of trying to imply that maybe for thousands of years there have been other beings like Freddy Krueger, like the Dream Demons have come for other people. I thought that was an interesting concept, but they could have explored it a lot more, I think. And created a better effect. What did you think of uh, y Yafet Kodo in the movie? He's the only person I really liked in the movie. I think he's an awesome actor. I like him. He's a really good actor. Um, he's the only performance that I think is really is actually decent in the in the film. Well, what about Robert Englund? He's I, you can tell he's having fun with the yeah. role and everything like that. But again, I mean, compared to it's too cartoon. It, it is. I didn't think that's what where it kind of although like, I must say that there are some scenes where he still shines. You know. Like the, towards the end of the movie where he comes out and he's human and he tries to sympathize with his daughter and get her to be on her side where he's like, you know what, you saw what they did to me when I was a kid. I tried to be good. I loved your mom. I think that's some pretty good right. acting. No, he's a, he's a great actor. It's just yeah. the material lets him die. It's like, yeah. he's, they didn't give him much to do, you know, except <laughs> to be a parody of himself. What, what did you think of uh, Alice Cooper playing Freddy's stepfather in the that movie? Was, that was a nice touch. I like, Al I like Alice Cooper a lot, you know, but again, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything substantial. You've been away since the day I took you in. <laughs> I actually did like the actor playing the teenage Freddy there. Yeah, I thought good. he did a pretty good job at really capturing a lot of Robert Englund's mannerisms mm -hmm. and stuff. Overall, this is a bad movie. I think oh, this yeah. is easily probably the worst of the series on a technical level. I still enjoy it as a guilty pleasure, but I know you guys clearly don't like it as much as I do. I mean, I can still watch it, and, you know, I do find little bits of it mm -hmm. here and there that I enjoy watching, but ultimately... Yeah, it is kind of sad to see that they. this is what they reduced Freddy to, you yeah. know. Going nice to hearing from your Carlos and pushing a bed of spikes in a cartoonish way. You know, it's... Uh, sad. Yeah, sad. <laughs> Here is Mark Allen Gunnell's review of Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Now six, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. That one is just a mess. Now, I like it because it's fun to watch, but it's mostly fun to watch because it is such a mess. It goes completely off the charts, and Springwood becomes this weird ghost town full of mentally ill adults that apparently no one else notices, and they they incorporate a familial link to Freddy that, you know, had previously been unexplored, and I felt like they changed his backstory a, a bit, and the backstory of the Nightmare on Elm Street house, and I didn't think all of that worked. And the 3D section at the end is completely unnecessary. I just felt like it was there to bolster a weak script. And for it to have supposed to have been the final film at the time, I thought the ending and the way they got rid of Freddy was a little cheap and not well thought out. Um, like I said, it's fun to watch because it's so kooky, but as a film, I don't think it works that well. Here is Chris's review of Freddy's Dead. This this one gets so much shit, but um, and I'm not really going to defend it, but I will say that I've always had fun watching it. I'll, I'll admit that it's uh, it's definitely the cheesiest one without a doubt. Especially like they're they're not even trying with Robert's makeup anymore on this one. <laughs> um, and then that that weird ass power glove scene, um, yeah, you know, it's like blatant fucking product placement for there, which you can give most movies shit for, but here it was just like so cheesy. 
Um, but it, it's it's fun to watch. I mean, the 3D sequences are great. We get uh, all of Freddy's backstory. It's it's pretty cool. Um, Breck and Meyer as a stoner. You know, that's always fun. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's fun to watch beyond uh, beyond all the complaints you can make about it. So I'll say that much. And here are John's thoughts on Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Nightmare on Elm Street uh, 6, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare is not my favorite of the series, but it have its moments. Like, I thought it was funny when uh, he's playing the video game, you see Brooklyn Meyer bouncing around like a pogo stick, doing like Bugs Bunny kind of cartoons. It also had some, it was funny when he's on the plane, he, the character who we don't know what his name is, but we, we never found out what his name was, right? Yeah, they just call him John Doe in the movie. Oh, I gotcha. It's, on, on the plane, he says he's afraid of heights, and uh, the woman says, don't be a pussy. <laughs> Also, it was funny when they spoofed uh, Wizard of Oz. I'll get you, my pretty. You're an old dog, too. <laughs> the character's not really as likable like in the other films. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoyed this video overall. That was my review of Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, and my next movie review will be on Wes Craven's New Nightmare.